as requested a little video of what I've got set up for the shop for the CNC. Closure is about 95% done. A few little things I'd like to do is finish off some of the trim, sand it down and give it a nice paint job, just flat primer white or something. Uh, get rid of the 2x4 legs and put some nice sturdy legs that can't get kicked out from under it. Um, so, um, my setup for the CNC conversion itself. Some of my other videos have some electronics and such when I had some difficulties, etc. But things are running beautifully now. My control panel, another user used something similar using arcade buttons. They're fantastic. Uh, nice and easy to, to hit when you're in a, in a hurry. You don't got to worry about breaking them or missing a button, etc. Joysticks for my X, Y, and Z. Zeroing, again, increase and decrease my feed rate. Also my spindle. Um, some miscellaneous buttons that I have on the side for controlling things like flood coolant or one of them is actually a shortcut for launching mock. Um, manual spindle control. This was what was mounted on the side of the BF20 uh, before. Now it's out here. Um, my auto manual switch. It's an auto. So everything is controlled off of mock, but I can turn it to manual and these controls work just like they used to. Um, my emergency on off also does my light and energizes everything inside. I have wired a key. I've got some young children and they like to bring their friends around and all I need is for them to be hitting all the nice fancy colorful buttons and something to, to happen. So. Without this key turned on, nothing is, is going to happen. I went with a wireless keyboard. Uh, it's great so that when I'm actually in front of the machine, if there's something specific I'm trying to do or look for, I'm not tied to the machine with a cable. I'm using uh, steel, mo um, mock blue steel. Made a few changes to uh, the overlay and stuff like that, can turning flood coolant on and off. Uh, I've integrated the tool change, put in the some of the stuff that Haas has done, and I've modified quite a bit of the code and, and tweaked it for my liking. Um, put a lot of the probe controls right on the front screen for myself. I can zero a corner or uh, on an edge uh, to a touch plate. I'll show you that afterwards as well. Um, I've also got a nice little adaptation of a screen that I bought the Touch Pro from Tormac. Awesome piece of gear, by the way, um, for setting that up. Inside of my control panel, which you've seen in other videos, got lots of space up top so I can put my fourth axis uh, axi. Uh, another breakout board. I got my C6 that controls my variable speed, turning on my spindle and forward reverse, which is working beautifully. I can show you that as well. Um, it says air cylinder, but that's actually my flood coolant. Main power relay, that is actually controlled by that key, so nothing can run without that key turned on. Um, these are my spindle on. Um, this relay is uh, contr transferring all the controls from the manual spindle control to the C6 board and then also forward and reverse relay. Um, KBIC board right here, this is the spindle control. So yeah, that's the, the cabinet. Um, air, blowing things off, my drains and that, which I've shown in other videos for the flood coolant, both drain into one drain into this five gallon pail. What two thirds full of coolant? Recently, put some handles and mounted my Shuttle Pro, so it's quite convenient. Got the doors all set up in a, a bifold, which is nice and easy to, to pop open and close with a, a button and closure to snap it and make sure it stays closed. Chips are, are very nicely contained now. I don't have to worry about having a mess across the entire shop. My wife giving me grief for dragging Swarf through the, the house all the time as much anymore. 
Flood coolant is uh, almost complete for where I like it. I'm going to be putting a distribution block in the front with at least two lock line hoses uh, so that both directions of travel I'm not you know, missing uh, my end mills and such like that. Made a tooling plate, also drilled uh, holes for a three jaw chuck and I got a four jaw chuck as well. I can just slap it down, uh, indexed, it's got uh, guide pins, the whole works. Same with the uh, guide pins right on the table. So I can pop this plate on and off, I can stack tooling, um, and I can just set up a, uh, a work coordinate and the machine hits it every time. A um, few things I've done way back, one of the first things I did was put a power draw bar. This is an impact driver um, that you can buy, it's a Ryobi, it is outstanding, I can change tools in seconds. Um, full tooling change four or five seconds, not a problem. Um, I set up a convenient plug for a touch plate and for the uh, Tormac touch probe. Just index, put it in, plug it in, it's all set up the way it reads. I got a relay inside um, because the touch probe is actually normally closed so when it touches it opens and then obviously the plate is the opposite. Um, mods from way back when I was turning uh, handles by hand as I got a, uh, a tram aid on both sides. That allows me to keep the head nice and square and of course I'm the one that found out that the three bolts inside, uh, the two extra bolts that came with the machine were for the head, can be used for the head. Left some tooling inside the inside the cabinet. It's easy to reach and grab. I just got some EDPM rubber um, that's covering my drivers. Um, had a bit of a surprise a couple days ago. Smelt something. What was that? Flood coolant was actually getting inside of uh, the connectors for the motor, and uh, I shorted out one of my pins. Didn't hurt anything, but I had to replace it. So I just re. re uh, Resoldered all my connections, and I siliconed everything uh, inside and outside the connectors to to make sure that it's not going to get any water inside of it later on. Uh, full armored cabling for my uh, stepper motors. One of the first parts I made, it'd be tough to see because I siliconed it all, was actually the bracket that mounts the uh, connector right to the motor. Uh, nice and clean, very sturdy. On the back, I've got my limit switches and everything going into this box. Uh, probably put a piece of rubber over top of this as well as to keep anything from hitting it. Uh, this plug down here from the surface plate for the auto automatic tool changing. Uh, I can just put the plate down. It knows where it's at. Do the tool change. It zeroes itself on the touch plate and away it goes. You can put a link to that if uh, people want. The enclosure wise, that's about it. Tooling, I just, uh, I like my little cart. Fairly cheap. I put a lot of the, the tooling that I use on a regular basis or for a job, I'll set up on this cart. Um, easy to get at. I can roll it around to wherever I need it where I'm playing with things. Uh, my parallels, some one, two, three blocks, uh, V block, some squares, mic, dial indicator, stuff like that. Um, just a 2x6 that I hogged out some material to hold collets and end mills and all that fun stuff. And here's that Tormach touch probe. Very impressed with this piece of gear actually. Made uh, life a lot easier. You can set up a, a piece of material very quickly. Uh, just hammer. Just a little for reaming out, deburring. Uh, the workspace, I got another computer, this is what I use for all my programming for my CAD and my posts and stuff. Um, that I just upload the finished mock post files right to my CNC and it takes care of the rest from there and then I can continue on working on other things while my machine is, is running parts. It's kind of a messy desk today but um, another thing. Put a little old vacuum that we had kicking around. I just run the hose up and around and I can take it and vacuum off the workbench. Makes cleanup quite a bit easier. 
another toolbox, uh, lots of other tools, nice surface plate, tooling and stuff like that, taps and measurement and all that fun stuff. This is uh, well worth the money. I still use it a lot. I thought I wouldn't use it as much when I converted to a CNC, but a uh, indicator for finding the center. Uh, this thing is awesome. It, within a few seconds of after setting up the CNC and automatically touch probe to find the center of a, um, a round piece of stock, for example, you're still off by a couple hundred thou or so. And if you're looking for a, a dead center hole, you just put that indicator into it, run it around the part, and you know exactly where you're at. Flood coolant, it's off one button. Gotta reset the program. Flood coolant off one button. Uh, for my spindle, like I had mentioned, I can grab my keyboard here. I can go forward and reverse. So do an M3. Oh, my uh, spindle speed is too low. I'll just do uh, speed 2000 M3. So that's clockwise, and I can go straight into an M4. Spindle shuts off. And go straight into counterclockwise. Spindle off. Straight into an M3. No worries. Turn that off. Of course, coolant on and off. Yeah. A nice waterproof uh, light up top. Outstanding for working with uh, with anything in here. You got lots of of, uh, of light to see. I also put a, a nice big axial fan. I just have it on a switch if I need it. I thought I'd need it because it would get warm in here. It doesn't get warm at all. It's been been nice and cool in here. I'm also not running the machine for hours on end. Being a hobbyist, I'm making one or two parts at a time, and it's lots of time for it to be turned off. Yeah, so the enclosure isn't 100% waterproof. Uh, it's definitely splash proof, but I can't have uh, a hurricane in here. I'm sure there'll be a few leaks here and there. It's been outstanding so far. So yeah, that's my setup. Any questions or comments, ideas, want me to share some links or some of the stuff that I've done in the past, um, give me a shout.